Hey guys, this is Ava and today I am in Suleimania, also known as Suli. This is the capital of culture in all of Kurdistan. A city also known as, I suppose, the bride of the cities of all of Iraq. There's a lot of culture, a lot of history here. I'm only here for like one day so I can show you a little bit of the city, but I hope to give you a good flavor of what Kurdistan's, I guess, second city is like. <laughs> Let's go. Locals here refer to their hometown as Suli, but that's the short, affectionate version. The city's full name is Suleimania. It's one of those vibrant cities where the streets are always clogged up with people buying, selling and hustling. From tea houses always ready to serve up a mean chai to barbershops waiting for customers, this city is as Middle Eastern as it gets. So imagine, this gentleman just walked up to me out of nowhere and gave me some figs. How sweet is that? That was just the beginning of all that famous Kurdish hospitality. Suli is a nice city with a very cool atmosphere, but what makes it special in my eyes is how welcome you feel here as a traveler. People seem genuinely happy to welcome foreigners into their hometown anywhere you go. And just got this apple. Also, as a gift. What is going on? <laughs> Suli is an interesting town. On the one hand, a modern city with a young population, and on the other, steeped in literary history, tradition, and winding souks. This bazaar is absolutely massive. It sort of winds all along the streets of Suleimania, under roofs, in the open air, changing from fruits to vegetables to nuts, to meat to clothes to tech accessories. You can find everything. For my local friends though, the most important thing about Suli is that it's the culture and literature capital of Iraqi Kurdistan. Okay, I'll tell you a funny little story. So before coming to Suli, all my friends were like, you have to come check out the city. It's all about culture and literature and music and the arts and it's famous for its poets and writers. And then I came and literally on the day that I arrived, we learned that UNESCO had just designated Suli as a creative city. It's one of its sort of network of creative cities with a special focus on literature. No wonder, you can feel there's like a sense of something creative, something artistic and artsy going on here, for sure. That statue just behind me, yeah, it was built quite recently here in Suli and apparently it's dedicated to the women of Kurdistan, thanking them for their strength and determination over the last few years of crisis and tension here in the region. But there's another side to Suli that's not really known to visitors. My local friends wanted to show me something that happens kind of behind the scenes. This is not your typical bazaar. And this road sign is also a sign of things to come. There's a really cool place here in Suli that I was told about by the locals. And this is a place I had not expected to find in Iraqi Kurdistan for sure. See, this is a street food market for Indian and Nepali food. There are a lot of Nepali and Indian and Filipino workers here and every Friday they get off and this is when they can come here to this street and have some of their own local food from back home. This place is so cool, so, so cool. Let me show you around. There are tens of thousands of foreign workers in Iraqi Kurdistan, many of them working on construction sites and in local houses. It's never an easy life to be so far away in a foreign country, away from your family, so this market feels like it provides a slice of home to an entire community. Here, chefs at makeshift stalls prepare all sorts of deliciousness, from Filipino to Indonesian to Indian snacks. So here we have momos, and momos basically are dumplings that exist in a lot of cultures, but these are probably from Nepal. From Nepal. Can I have one momo, please? All right, great, thank you. Ugh, just look at that plump, juicy bite of heaven. Let's give this a shot. Mmm. Mmm. Super good. Wow, just like the real thing. It is the real thing. Amazing. You might think that all these flavors only attract the expat population. Well, you'd be wrong to think so. Kurdish locals come here too, to find some of the most authentic food from all around Asia. I just loved being here to see a side of Kurdistan that's rarely talked about, and to see how these people connect back to their roots and share those roots with the locals 
through the universal language of food. And as the sun began to set over the city, it was time to move on to the night market, which only ever opens after dark. I can't promise that I won't show you more food. Obviously, one of the top things that you should do in any city at night is go and have some street food. And it's no different here in Sydney because here they actually have a street food, street kind of place as well, which I am really looking forward to showing you around because this place contains some yummy Middle Eastern delicacies. Hi, Eva. Ah. Yep, that was someone recognizing me from my vlogs on the streets of Suli. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, back to the night market and it's food. When in the Middle East, you do not forget to try all the food. That's just what you do, okay? This sandwich apparently is called a hima in Kurdish, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Looks great. So it's basically chopped up meat. There's various different kinds, no vegetarian option. Plus a lot of vegetables, scabbage, tomatoes on the inside. Let's try. Mm. Wow, that is really juicy. Amazing, so rich. Just packed with all different kinds of flavors. Really nice. All right, time for dessert. Just maybe not the creepy Nutella. <laughs> Let's go for something local. So I'm just about to try something special and local. It's called kunafa. 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 <laughs> and it's got sugar. Sugar, uh, flour, and a little sweet, mm -hmm. a little oil, uh, and cheese. Okay, great. Let's go for it. Let's try one. <laughs> Wait, did he say a little or a lot of sugar? I'm not even gonna ask. Wow, that is cheesy. Mmm, oh my gosh, so creamy, super sweet. You can really taste that crunchiness on the outside, super soft on the inside. Wow, delicious. <laughs> This lovely gentleman then showed me all the cakes that he bakes on the side. And last but not least, on my market tour, coffee. This, by the way, is the process of making a Kurdish coffee. So it's made in these copper pots and then stirred around in hot sand to heat it up. It's a pretty unusual technique and it's really, really cool. Because if you don't drink a strong coffee at night in Kurdistan, are you really in Kurdistan? And so my short time in Zuli came to an end. And my friends here threw me just the perfect goodbye. Before you sign off, just listen to Sina's song. <laughs> Thank you.